Hello everyone, I hope this finds you doing great. I am Annie Anilon. Welcome to the podcast of the System Medicine Session of the Control and Decision Conference CDC 2017 in Melbourne, Australia. I'm really excited today because I'm going to share with you an amazing podcast. I'm with two amazing guests. They are going to tell us a little bit about themselves before talking about the session system medicine that we just had today. I'm Ryan Zurakowski, Associate Professor at the University of Delaware Biomedical Engineering. My interest has been modeling disease systems and using control techniques to uh, better design experiments uh, in human subjects. Hello, I'm Sarah Spurgeon. I have long interests in switch control systems, which most recently um, I've been very much enjoying applying to analysis of the immune system. Can you tell us a little bit about your research and how you got interested? I studied uh, control systems engineering at the uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, and I was first exposed to mathematical modeling in medicine at a SIAM conference where I saw a very excellent talk by uh, Sarah Holte uh, on uh, a model that actually was uh, also used today in one of the talks in our session. Um, and it was just very inspiring. Uh, suddenly, instead of dreading my work, I was really looking forward to it. And uh, um, I, I had a advisor that was willing to let me uh, jump into this area, and I've never looked back. <laughs> That's good. Cool. How about you, sir? Well, for me, I've always been a theoretician and I've had interests in a, a range of, of application areas. I first got involved in this area really um, through exposure to some interesting practical problems and finding that some quite involved theory I'd been involved with for proving issues such as finite time stability naturally um, satisfied some of these biological systems. So I became intrigued that some of these switched systems in biology, there were things that we as control engineers could, could learn about them. And then naturally with that became an interest in thinking, well, is there a way understanding these switch control systems and how they work that might help give some insights, some different sort of insights into how patients respond to drug treatment. How did you come up with the session with Esteban Vargas? Several of us who have worked in these areas of uh, applications of control to medicine, um, to be honest, we just wanted an opportunity to make sure that we could meet together um, at the, in Melbourne and, uh, and see what everybody's been working on. Um, so we designed a session that would have been broad enough to bring all the people together. And then the other thing that's really wonderful about these sessions is, is that people uh, show up that you haven't met before and you get to see, uh, you broaden your circle of who's working on this area. So that was basically the idea, was to see who, what new ideas there were in applying control theory to medical inspired problems. What's your highlight of the day? To be honest, uh, for me, so all the all the talks were very good, um, uh, but the one for me that was a highlight because I've been waiting to see it for so long was uh, Dr. Chong's talk on the uh, on modeling resistance emergence risk. I think he had a, a very simple yet uh, well thought out way of of modeling that, and since I know that's a very important problem for HIV treatments, evaluating their safety as well as their efficacy. Uh, that was a highlight for me. Yeah. All right. How about you, Sarah? I also really enjoyed that paper because it immediately made me begin to think about what would be the implication of his results in terms of some of the things we've been thinking about uh, in terms of how the, the immune system is actually behaving when this is happening. So a natural step of being able to predict this is likely to happen and the conditions of where it's likely to happen, there becomes the interesting question of, well, what's really happening to the immune system while this happens? And I thought that was a fascinating, a fascinating idea that you could perhaps put things together across the session to create even better knowledge um, um, which I was excited about. That's very really good. We move to another section of this podcast. The aim of this section is to motivate students and junior researchers. Do you mind sharing with us your personal experience in academia? 
I got into this field uh, not never intending to go to graduate school. I went to, to undergraduate at UC Santa Barbara and was convinced to apply to the graduate school by the person who became my advisor. And to be honest, it was something that it wasn't part of my plan. But along the line, I basically discovered that if you go into academic research, you have an amazing opportunity to work on things purely because they're interesting and being able to pursue these topics. And my encouragement to people in the field would be to find things that you are very interested in and just continue to push your way into that field. One other thing I would say to encourage people, to work in this crossover field, you need to connect with people that give you clinical data. And my encouragement would be, don't be afraid to cold call these people, to send cold emails. The worst they can say is no, and you will be surprised at how often they say yes. Brian. I totally agree with you. We are currently doing this podcast because I've received positive replies from cold calls and cold emails. I have actually sent some cold emails to the organizers of this conference to ask them for the required permission to do the podcast. And here we are. We are doing this podcast on system medicine. Sarah, could you please tell us a little bit about your journey in academia? I was always very interested in applied mathematics. I actually studied for a mathematics degree. And so I was always fascinated about how mathematics could be used to, to help understand things. I became involved in control engineering from a, very much a backdoor route. It was an advisor of mine who supervised an undergraduate project who thought I might be good at it. Um, and there was an opportunity to work with industry and academia on a particular project that grew my PhD and whereby I first got interested in switch control systems. So I certainly would support what Ryan says about doing things that interest you. I think that that is incredibly important. But I think using the networks around you, even at a very early career stage, is an incredibly important thing. I, I've been richly supported in my career um, and f with some wonderful advice. Um, and I think engaging with those networks is, a, is, an important, uh, is an important step in one's career planning. What can you say for women in engineering and women in science? Absolutely go for it. I'm in the UK, which in Europe is, is the worst for the percentage of women in engineering. But there is absolutely no reason why you cannot succeed. It's an interesting area. There is a lot of good we can do and go with, go with what you're interested in. Um, gender should make no difference and it will not make any difference once you engage. Many of the young women we see coming through universities in the UK and going on to PhDs are absolutely outstanding because they're going against the grain. It's a very unusual thing to do, but that doesn't mean it's not a, fan a fascinating, creative, exciting thing to do. So go for it. We're going to end on these last words. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your time in Melbourne and the conference. This is the end of the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anas.